All right, let's talk about the upcoming IPO for Rubrik. And as you can see on screen, I've prepared a script for today. So we will go over the key metrics together. And then I will give my opinion on whether or not I think that this IPO will be oversubscribed or undersubscribed. So stay tuned for that at the end of the video. All right, so IPO here for Rubrik, it will drop next week. The ticker symbol that it will trade at will be RBRK. And let's take a look at some of the metrics here. So we let's familiarize with the business. The current subscription here, AAR, is 784 million. And this is the total annual value of all their contracts. So just adding them up, all right. And then we have growth rate of this AAR at 47%. Quite good growth. Hopefully this metric needs no further explanation. Then we have dollar-based net retention. This is 130%. The calculation here is a set of customers for one year prior, how much they paid to Rubrik, and then the same group of customers now, and what's the difference in revenue. So the formula here, for those of you who are listening in, I'll read all these important points. I think this is the most important from the filings. We have cohort revenue plus upsell. And this we will take minus downsells and churn. And the dollar based net retention here is quite good. This is a good number, 130%, all right? However, this is where the green flags ends. And I have a theory on why they're doing the IPO now, and we will get to that as well. Gross margin here, 76.9%, all right? So over 75%, that's quite good as well. So another green flag here, I forgot about this one. Anyways, on to the red flags. Spending on sales marketing here, we saw 482 million. And this means that they're spending about $2 to add $1 to AAR here. And ideally, this figure would be closer for to one to one. And in their S1 here, we can see that the increase in total revenue from end of year 2022 to end of year 23 was only 28 million. So the way that I interpret this is that they spend $17 to add $1 on incremental revenue. And that's a red flag, in my opinion. Then we have net profit margin minus 56%. So net income divided by net sales. This evaluates if the company is making money. So once again, profitability, they're burning cash. And that's another red flag. It really ties into why I think they're making the IPO now as well, because they're burning cash and maybe they can't get another seed round from investors. And this could be what they need to do to keep going, to get a liquidity event for the companies that funded it and for executives. Executives have quite a lot of equity as we will see later as well. Rule of 40, I summarized this as well. I don't like this rule, I don't use it, but I know that it's popular with tech investors here. And it's real simple. We just take the, uh, the growth rate here of 47%. And then the net profit margin, we just add it to it. And in this case, it's a negative number, so it will be a subtraction. And this basically means that it's okay to lose money as long as you grow really, really quickly. We've seen this work in the case of Palantir, but we've also seen it fail spectacularly in the case of, for example, WeWorks. So... Good and bad, yeah. But the objective here is to get to 40, then that's good, that's the benchmark. Unfortunately, rubric adds up to minus nine. So we're a bit off for those who like the rule of 40. In terms of expected outcome for this IPO, it looks to be trading somewhere between seven and eight times the next 12 month sales. And that puts the market cap somewhere in five to seven billion. That's just an estimate if the IPO is successful. And then in this case, you know, the last private valuation from, uh, from what I was able to tell here is 4 billion. This will be quite nice for 
some of the employees here, if they're able to liquidate here from their pre-IPO shares for some of the investors as well. Let's take a look at the executives here, the CEO, a nice juicy salary of 375,000 in base, the same in bonus. The chief financial officer, 365,000 base, same in bonus, and then 12 million in equity compensation, sweet. Chief revenue officer, $550,000 in base, and the same in bonus slash commission here. And then 9,200,000 in equity compensation. Imagine having a liquidity event on these and at the valuation from the past. Well, there's going to be a nice retirement for these boys. They probably have a clause that they need to stay on for three years or something like that before they can leave. But this is definitely retirement money. Anyways, I think there's a big risk that this IPO will be undersubscribed. As you saw in the numbers, there are quite a few red flags. And... I don't know what underwriter it is, how good they are at filling blocks, how much will be sold to other institutions, how many institutions will dare to purchase large blocks at this kind of valuation here, five to seven billion in market cap. It's quite risky in my opinion. As I mentioned earlier, I think that it's likely that they can't get more funding from investors. They won't pump more more money into this company and that's why they're choosing to have this liquidity event now the IPO even though it's currently a bad market remember we talked about Bauch and Health They're, they were looking to make an IPO with the skincare company Stolta here they choose not to because of the bad environment and they haven't even spun off one of their businesses as well so we're seeing a very poor climate in the stock market right now in terms of asset plays, in terms of IPOs underperforming as well. And I think that with these kind of numbers, an IPO is not something that investors are looking for from Rubrik in this case. And I think it will be quite risky to invest in this one. But that's just my opinion. I always hope that you guys make a ton of money, whatever investments you decide to make. But, you know, these are my comments on the upcoming IPO. All right, that's it. Take care. Bye-bye.